I, I'm getting enough text messages a day with friends of mine that are in the hospital and they don't come out alive. Now, do you think this was a demon uh, in the flesh or do you think it was a, a person taken over by a demon? This is a depopulation plan from the pit of hell that we are funding with our tax dollars. I just want to thank you for watching my shows. My new show, uh, episode two of Last Evangelist is out. It's about the vaccine, the deadly vaccine, the truth of it. And if you'd like to see it, you can go to davidheavener.tv and watch it. If you haven't seen episode one, you can watch that too. Please go sign up, David Heavener TV. And thank you, thank you for being part of this mission. God bless. Well, I wanted to ask you a question, David. Is that okay? Sure. What can we do with this nasty, evil, demonic plot from the pit of hell with Bill Gates and his posse and cohorts where they have carved in rock in the Georgia Guidestones that I went to go see firsthand two decades ago and learned a ton when I was in film and TV in Hollywood behind the scenes working on set all these places with the evil demonic plot of the depopulation plan in 10 different ways. We got the shot. We've got radiation. We have the chemtrails in the air. We've got the nasty fluoride in the water. And I could talk for another 30 minutes just on how they're trying to kill us off. I mean, here in America, I, I'm getting enough text messages a day with friends of mine or relatives of friends of friends that are in the hospital and they don't come out alive. This is a depopulation plan from the pit of hell that we are funding with our tax dollars. So my question is, what can we do to wake people up that it's gates? You know, in Matthew 17, 18, it says the gates of hell shall not prevail. I personally think that God was telling us it's Bill Gates, man. He's not going to prevail. But that's just Tina's two cents. Yeah. What can we do here, uh, David? OK, uh, I'm, that's a good question, Tina. And, and I'm going to tell you how I respond personally to that. OK. Yes. Um, Ephesians 1, 19 and his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. We have the power of the living God in us that we defeat the enemy. Um, now, I, I want to tell you, I say this humbly, I eat carpet as I'm saying it. Don't Please don't think that I'm on a high horse at all. But I've seen it. I've, I've come against demons, and I'm sure you have too. But I don't. A demon like Bill Gates and these. I mean, these guys are just used by Satan. You know, yep. they're going to be cremated. It's just you know. Yep. So, so what do we do? The first thing we have to do is understand the power that you and I, I have in us. Yep. Understand the the danger we are to the enemy. For us yep. not to be afraid of them, they need to tremble when they're around us. Okay. Us. And I'm not telling you we're not going to be persecuted. We may be persecuted, but it's like Rocky in the last scene of Rocky when he stands up and he says, go ahead, go ahead, bring it on. And he just keeps getting hit and hit and he doesn't go down. And he's just telling the evil guy, you know, Creed, bring it on. And he, tr the devil tries to take him down and he wins by default of just not going down. And so we as Christians, we have this power in us that when we walk into a room, any demon in there should tremble and just pass out, okay? Um, so this is how I have to live my life, because if I don't, the things I've encountered, the horrible, horrendous, just evil would take me out. And I have to just ride on that power that raised Christ from the dead. And that same power that raised Christ from the dead is actually in you and in me. And God help any demon that comes against God's children, they will be obliterated. David, that was an excellent answer. I, I will tell you that one demonic filled person tried to enter my house and wipe myself out with my four kids, another friend and her four kids. And I went in for the knife and survived the attack because I knew God wasn't done with me yet. So I got an extra thick skin going on here, plus surviving in Hollywood. So I completely agree with you. You said you were attacked by somebody with a knife? The, the, the oh, yeah. Satan came in. Were you in Hollywood? No, I was living in Podunk, Missouri, but I could tell you 10 stories like that. I had a demon oh. in my vehicle when I was in Boston heading over for an hour drive to go speak at a youth conference. And that demon took a hold of my steering wheel and tried to 
swipe my truck into the side of a semi. So I have had my fair, I could tell you 10 stories like that, but the knife intruder was absolutely demo demonic. He was possessed because I looked in his eyes. He had a mask on everything. And I was looking at a demon, not a person. That guy doesn't even remember what he did when he got pulled over by the cops. But I went in for the knife to, to fight him when after a five minute battle in my office, he wanted my kids to line up and my friend's kids to line up when he entered the house to try to wipe me out. And I said, hell to the no, you're not touching me. You're not touching my kids. I tried to go on Facebook live something. He was trying to strip my phone out of my hand, pulls out this knife that was at least a foot long to try to slice and dice my face. And that's when I went in for grabbing the knife. I don't even know how I didn't get my hand sliced off. Pushed me down some stairs. I jumped back up thinking I was a goner and I chased him out of the yard in my truck after him down the street. Wow. And you didn't even get cut? Nothing happened? I did, I mean did not get cut. I don't remember that part at all. He just whipped the knife out in front of my face and I grabbed. I remember I grabbed with my right hand, his hand with the knife in it as he's waving it in my face. That's when he pushed me down a flight of stairs. And I'm like, if he's, he's either going to flee or I'm going to die fighting for my children. Now, do you think this was a demon uh, in the flesh, or do you think it was a, a person taken over by a demon? Do you think it was a demon I, that manifested in the flesh or someone taken over? I think he was taken over by what okay. I saw. It, God told me a week before, David, he's done this so many times in my life, he'll warn me ahead of time. He told me a week before, keep your eye out in your office window, eye out of the office window, something's gonna happen. I'm like, what in the world? I'm on a dead end, nothing's going, going down. I already had my brain prepared for what God was already warning me and I could tell you so okay. many stories that I should have been dead over the years. Yeah, and one last question, is that demon that got in your car to, to hijack your car, was it a physical someone in the flesh a demon in the flesh or was it a no. spirit that was controlling your car it was a spirit that was controlling my car and if i got one minute to tell you what happened my now husband luke was in a drug rehab facility he tried to commit suicide before he met god didn't let him die that's a whole other story in itself he then went through this drug rehab program for a year, was teaching a bunch of guys at a Bible study. And that night when I was driving and I was dating him at the time, we we're engaged to be married. I was driving from Boston an hour west of there in my truck about a halfway into it. I'm listening to Christian music, blasting it, praying ahead of time, asking God what he wants me to share through me the next day for these kids like I normally do. And this demonic entity, it was invisible grabbed a hold of my wheel physically and tried to steer my wheel into the semi. And I was putting all my weight to the left. Luke calls me in the middle of that. And all I have to say, David, if I remember how this stuff went down, I heard him. He's like, Tina, are you okay? God told me I had to call you and pray for you. We're praying for you. What's going on? I tried telling him there's something in my car while well, I'm trying to hold onto the cell and put all my weight with one hand on the steering wheel screaming into the phone. There's a demon in my car and all he and I heard was the most demonic laugh I've ever heard in my life. That was like, hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. And the hair on the back of my neck went up, hit the phone went dead. He thought I was getting killed in some woods. And I'm all I know what to say in the truck was in the name of Jesus, get out of my vehicle in the name of Jesus. And I just said it for like a minute and a half, two minutes. Wow. You know, Tina, I did a whole show on cars that were that had that were portal demon portals. And and what? and I, yeah, oh, yeah. I did a whole show on that and I actually casted a demon out of my car uh, because there was de demonic activity in it. So I've experienced exactly what you just experienced. I was film I was doing a show in my car and I had the camera and the camera got thrown up against the window. So I'm so glad that you brought that up because when you said that, I go, I got to ask her about that. Episode two depicts of the world of of which the vaccine operates, the deception behind it, what's happening now and what's gonna happen in the very near future. But don't miss episode two of Last Evangelist, the insertion. It talks about the mark of the beast, the new AI Bible, this new Jesus they've created. I want you to go and sign up right now. Go to davidhevener.tv or call 844-806-0006. Christian TV series, The Last Evangelist, season one, episode one. I'm a special guest star in this, along with a, a famous actor by the name of Johnny Whitaker, and he plays an archbishop. I could be nominated for an Oscar for this. You could get The Last Evangelist right now. This is different.
For a Christian film, it's intense. Well, here's what David Hebner says. Prophecy has now become reality. The Last Evangelist is a cutting edge end time series on how revelation prophecies are already being fulfilled today. From a demonic government controlled to the mark of the beast, it's a fast paced criminal investigative show. CSI meets the book of Revelation. Lisa Haven's in this. There's some other really good actor and actresses in here. David Hevener is a star. David's been in 50 films, 32 of which he's produced. So he's a good director and a great filmmaker. It's top-notch quality. Get your copy tonight.